Hey guys, welcome back to another video on PS4 Linux. Continuing my series on OpenW Audio Tutorials, today I have something interesting for you. Do you live in a house or have an office where you have to share files constantly between devices connected to your home network? Are you actually still using USB devices or wired devices for this? Well, let's change that, okay? We're going to use a network drive to transfer files and store our files. Most people think that this setup would be expensive. That's why they just skip this. But in this video, I'm going to show you how you can do that very easily using a device running OpenWRT. It could be a router or any other device that is OpenWRT compatible. We're going to discuss the whole process in detail, beginning with the requirements. Okay. The first requirement is obviously a device that is currently running OpenWRT with a USB port or even a memory card port. In this video, we're going to be discussing doing it with a USB device. A USB device also includes a hard drive that is an external or internal hard drive that is connected using a SATA to USB adapter as well. Okay, so you can use that as well if you are planning on hosting large files. Okay, and just a key point here, if you are using an Amplify HD, I recommend that you flash the updated image with inbuilt Lucy and USB dependencies and then set up Xtrude using the earlier video that I posted. All of these you can find the link in the description. We need Xtrude on Amplify HD. Xtrude is nothing but a system with which you can expand the internal storage on your router running OpenWRT, okay? So we're gonna need that because we need to install certain packages to set up this home server. And then you're gonna need SSH or terminal access to OpenWRT device. The process to gain SSH terminal access to your OpenWRT device has been discussed in earlier videos and is also available freely on the internet. You can search for that as well if you face issues, okay? And then you're obviously gonna require a USB drive or a hard drive connected using a SATA to USB adapter. You will also require the Gparted Live ISO and you can boot up to it using a virtual machine or for that matter, any other PC or device using a USB drive. Okay. We're going to need that Gparted Live. Gparted is nothing but a partition manager, which runs on Linux. So we're going to need this to repartition our drive. Okay. We're going to add a new partition. And if you already have extrude set up on your partition, you're going to need this Gparted Live. Okay. We're going to talk about that later in the video. So let's just jump into the tutorial with the first step that is installing Samba server and certain dependencies. To do that, I'm going to open up my terminal. I already have it here. And as you can see, I'm uh, logged in as root. You will also have to log in as root to install the packages that are necessary. Okay. So first of all, I'm going to update the package list by typing opkg update and press enter. Then I'm going to type the next command to install certain packages that are necessary for Samba to run. Okay. So this is that command guys. You will have to make sure that you replace USB 2 with USB 3. If your router or device has a USB 3.0 port, mine has a USB 2 port. That's why I'm using that. Okay. Once you have all of these set, just press enter. And if you already have extrude running on your router, some of these packages would already have been installed. Okay. And that's it. It is complete. You might find some of these errors. You can ignore these errors, especially if you are on an Amplify HD. That is a kernel uh, dependency based error, which can be ignored for now. Okay. Now we move on to the next step where we decide what type of partition style we want to use on our USB drive. So this here is a command. Let me quickly highlight it if, you, if it is not visible for you. This installs three modules, one for X4 support, one for XFAT support and one for NTFS3 support. Okay. I plan to do this on an X4 partition. That's why I'm going to leave both of these. Okay. I'm not going to install both of these, but if you want to do it, you can do the other two partition styles as well. Okay. You can find all of these commands on my blog as well. You can just copy and paste them. Okay. I'm going to install X4 support right now. Okay. That went uh, fine as well. These are uh, errors that are expected. So we can just ignore them. And K mod FS X4 was already installed on my Amplify HD router because I'm already running X2. Okay. And then I'm going to actually install the Samba web admin gui app okay that is lucy app for samba to do that i'm going to type this command that's it right here and then i'm going to press enter this might take some time let the installation complete okay and that's it we have installed everything that is necessary to run samba on your open wrt server okay and that completes step one of the process. So I'm going to quickly clear this to make way for step two, where we will be setting up a Samba user. This is done for security purposes because we don't want root access to be given. So we will set up a new user just for running the network drive. Okay. This is safer. This step does require 
editing of certain text files. So I'm going to install an easy text editor that is nano. To do that, I'm going to type opkg install nano and then press enter. And that's it. Nano is installed. Now let us edit the first file. That is the password file. To do that, I'm going to type nano space slash ATC. That is forward slash forward slash again and then PASSWD. Okay. And then press enter. This will give us a list of all the users that are currently available on our system. As you can see, we already have the root user here. I'm just going to scroll down using my arrow keys to the bottom of this text file and add my user. And this is the line that you will have to add to add your user. Okay. There is one thing that we need to change here compulsorily. That is Noob404. This is my user. You can provide any username you want here by replacing Noob404. You can actually copy this command from my blog and then just replace Noob404. Okay. And we also have to make sure of one thing. This is the UID GID pair, as you can see right here, separated by a colon. Okay. 1001 is a UID and 1001 is a GID here. Okay. So you will have to look through this file and see if 1001 is already used by any other user. If it is used, you will have to change this value to 1002 and this value as well to 1002 or any other incremental value, for example, 1003, 1004 or whatever. And once done to save this, I'm going to press on control S and then control X to save and exit. Okay. Now let us edit the second file. That is a group file. To do that, I'm going to type nano slash etc slash group. Okay. And then press enter. Now I'm going to scroll to the bottom of the file and then type this again here you will have to replace your username here by replacing the term no 404 here and here there are two instances of it do change them both if you had changed it earlier in the password file okay and if you had provided any other value other than 1001 in the password file make sure that it is also reflected here okay once that is finalized press on control s and then control x to save and exit now we are ready to set up a password for our new user that is no 404 in my case. Now you'll have to remember both this username and password because this will be required to access the network drive. Okay. To set up a password for this new user, I'm going to type SMB P A S S W D space hyphen A that is small A and then space the username in my case, that's no 404 and then press enter. Now it is going to ask for a password. Okay. Now I'm going to provide my password. You will have to provide it again and then press enter each time. Okay. It says that the user has been added. So that completes step two. Now we'll move on to the third step of the process that is partitioning the USB drive. If you do remember, I had chosen the X4 partition style. Okay. Now there are multiple options here. If you're doing this on a device, which already has pretty good internal storage, then I would recommend that you use a USB drive partition to X4 or uh, any other partition style that you choose. Okay. If you want to create an X4 partition on a newly formatted USB drive, it's pretty easy. You can do it on OpenWRT itself. The instructions for the same are given in the article linked in the description. You can check that out. But if you are running Xtrude on your router and want to use the same USB drive for the network drive as well, that would require repartitioning of the USB drive. Okay. In this video, I'm going to show you the steps to actually repartition the drive to shrink the existing extrude partition and create a new partition for our network drive. Okay. But before we do that, we'll have to power off our router because we're going to remove the USB drive that is connected currently in extrude mode. Okay. So I'm going to type power off here and then press enter. This will disconnect me from SSH and we'll wait for the router to power off. As you can see, it has disconnected. Now I'm going to unplug my USB drive from the OpenWRT router and plug it into my virtual machine that will be running Gparted Live. If you're wondering why I'm using Gparted Live instead of Gparted packages already available on uh, various distros like Lubuntu and Fedora, I actually faced an issue while repartitioning and the easiest fix was to use Gparted Live for the repartitioning part. That's why I'm using Gparted. Okay. I'll see you on Gparted with the USB drive plugged in. Just wait for it. So this is Gparted Live running on my system using virtual machine. Okay. And uh, this is the Gparted window, as you can see right here. I've just plugged in my USB drive. I'm going to go to the device selector and see if it has shown up already. It has not. So I'm going to go to Gparted and click on refresh devices. Okay. And it has automatically switched to my USB drive in the device selector, as you can see right here. Okay. It says extrude as well, which confirms it. Okay. Now I'm going to shrink this partition. To do that, I'm going to right click here and click on resize. Okay. And then I'm going to use this slider here to move it back. Okay. And I wish to give 
the extrude partition around 10 GB as you can see right here. This would say new size which would pertain to the already existing partition while the free space would be the partition that we allocate to the network drive. Once you're satisfied with this, just click on resize. Okay, as you can see, almost 9.79 GB is allocated to the extrude partition while we have an unallocated space of 18.85 GB which we will be using for the network drive. To create the new network drive that is an X4 partition, I'm going to right click on this allocated space and click on new and then make sure that X4 is selected in the file system part and then click on add and then I'm going to finalize the changes by clicking on this green tick right here and click on apply. I'm going to wait for the process to complete depending on your USB drive. It might take some time. Okay. And that's it. The process is complete. We have successfully repartitioned the drive. Now I'm going to unplug the USB drive from my virtual machine running GParted Live and then plug it back into my router and switch it on. Okay. My OpenWRT device that is the Amplify HD router is now powered on with the newly partitioned USB drive. We're going to make sure that the extrude configuration that we had done in the earlier video has survived the new repartitioning. Okay. To do that, I'm going to go to my web admin page that is for the router and then I'm going to go into system and then click on software. And as you can see, it now reflects the new size of the extrude partition, 9.44 GB. So now that prepares us for the last step of the pro whole process of setting up your network drive, that is setting up the Samba network share on OpenWRT. To do that, first of all, go to system and then click on mount points. Okay. And then we're going to scroll down and see if it is already mounted. As you can see, SDA1 is mounted and, and it says 9.79 GB. This is not what we want. We want SDA2 to be mounted. For that, I'm going to click on add here, okay, and then click on UUID and then make sure that SDA2 is selected, okay, as you can see SDA2. And then as for the mount point, I'm going to choose a custom mount point that is slash MNT slash SDA2, okay, and then press enter here to set it and then click on save, okay, as you can see it is already set up here and then I'm going to make sure that this part that is auto mount file system is selected here okay just to save it all i'm gonna scroll down to the bottom of the page and click on save and apply okay and that's it as you can see after reloading the page under mounted file systems we do have sda2 set up here okay now what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna click on services and click on network shares okay this is where we will set up the samba server and the first thing you'll have to set up is the interface it depends on your setup. I'm going to choose LAN for mine, but depending on your setup, if you had made any out of the box changes to your network, you will have to make sure that that is reflected here as well. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on add. Okay. And then I'm going to provide a good name for my server. I'm going to choose my drive for the time being. Okay. You can choose anything. And as for the path, you will have to provide slash MNT slash SDA2. Okay. That was the drive that we just set up and mounted okay and make sure that browsable is ticked read only and force root will not have to be ticked because we already have our user set up for that and that user was noob 404 in my case if yours is different just provide the name here i'm going to provide noob 404 here and make sure that this allow guests is unticked for security purposes okay and uh, the mask and uh, directory mask can remain the default that is 666 and 0777 Okay, once you have all of that ready, all you have to do is click on save and apply. Okay. Once done, if you scroll down, you will find it here. Okay, we are all set for it. Now, just for the sake of it, I'm going to show you that this drive is actually online. To do that, I'm going to SSH into my router. Here I am on my OpenWRT shell and then I'm going to enter my newly created partition okay to do that i'm going to type cd space slash mnt slash sda2 and then press enter and then i'm going to quickly list the files here if there are any lost plus found is a default folder that is created now i'm going to quickly download our copyright free image from pexels.com to this folder to show you how you can access this same file on a windows machine or for that matter any other machine that you have connected to your network okay so here it is downloading the file to slash mnt slash sda2 okay and that's it the download is complete now we're going to try to access this network drive on windows how do you do that let me show you first of all you will have to open up your windows file explorer and go to the address bar okay in the address bar you will have to enter your router's ip in my case that is this one 192.168.29.15 i'm going to copy it 
But before entering that, I'm going to enter two backward slashes, okay? Backward slashes, two of those, and then enter my IP, okay? Just make sure that this HTTP is removed. You don't want that here, okay? Just the two backward slashes and then your router's IP, and then press enter, okay? This will ask for your username and password, which we had set up in step two, if you remember. We're going to provide that here. Okay, my username was new 404 and then I'm also going to provide my uh, password as you can see right here. If you want these credentials to be remembered, just click here. If this is your private PC, then go for it. I would not recommend it if you're trying it, this on a public PC, okay? And then press OK to log in. This might take some time depending on your system, okay? And the first time around it might take some time, but this is what you will see, okay? Once you have that, this is the name that we had provided for our drive, if you do remember, okay? So I'm gonna go into that drive, and as you can see, this is the file that we just downloaded using the terminal, okay? I'm gonna try and play it, and yep. And as you can see, the video plays fine, okay? And you can also move your files here using Windows. And do remember that this Samba network share can be accessed over multiple OSs, including Android, Linux and stuff. I have the instructions for each of these OSs on my blog. You can check the link in the description for that. Okay. And also remember, you can actually use this as your media server as well, because this link will also show up on your VLC media player. More instructions can be found on the link in the description. And if you do face any issues during this setup, especially when accessing this over Windows, just try rebooting both the router and Windows system a few times if you do face the issue you can also check out the official documentation for further troubleshooting steps as well as my blog i'll be adding further troubleshooting steps if i do face any issues in the future okay so that's it for this video guys i'll see you in the next video bye bye